Well, good morning and glad to welcome you into God's house this morning. It's time to share together, time to study God's Word, a time to learn better about how to be God's children and how to minister in the world around us. Today we have an excellent opportunity to learn how to reach the world and, and learn the, uh, what we can do to make our lives better and the lives of people around us better. We're going to look at some scripture from the uh, John the 12th chapter, uh, verses, uh, verses 20 to 28. And we're going to look at uh, an a inquiry from some folks from, from, uh, from Greece. Uh, John tells us that some men from Greece came asking Philip, could they, could they see Jesus and what, could they talk to him? And we're not sure exactly why they they came. John doesn't tell us that. Uh, but we know that the Greeks were uh, were particularly interested in philosophy and philosophers and about uh, the meaning of life. So perhaps they came uh, to uh, to to talk to Jesus about his <coughs> excuse me, his philosophy of life and and and, and how uh, we live the very best we can. We don't know that, but let's listen to what John tells us, and then let's think a little bit about uh, what what uh, John wants us, uh, God wants us to know through our lesson from John this morning. Beginning in verse 20, uh, John writes these words. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we'd like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip, uh, in turn, told Jesus. And then Jesus uh, revealed a little bit, a bit about his philosophy of life. And, and, and uh, John says, Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seed. But uh, anyone who loves their life will lose it. Um, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And there we end the reading of our lesson and ask that God will help us understand what we need to learn for our life in the coming days. Now, I said a while ago that perhaps the, uh, perhaps the Greek came because they're interested in philosophy and, and what Jesus' philosophy of life might be. But Jesus was not a philosopher. Uh, we, we have nothing that he wrote and, and very little of, of what he said. He, he didn't, didn't employ complex sentences and, and use language that... Uh, that was high and mighty. Uh, he, he spoke in parables. He used the language of the common person in his time. And yet 2,000 years later, we're still hanging on to everything that he say, says and everything that we can glean from what he says in our lives. Uh, hundreds of thousands of brilliant uh, men and women have studied every word that he spoke and, and have written countless numbers of books, libraries full of books about what Jesus did in his life and how he still exerts influence in our lives uh, today. Now, when I look at this and I think about what, what, what we're uh, considering, it seems to me that Jesus' lasting power is not because of what he said. Jesus' lasting power is because of who he was. There was something about the very person of Jesus himself uh, that has fascinated people of every generation over the last 20 centuries uh, since, his, since his death. 
And, 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 and that's why those first words that the Greeks spoke um, uh, um, mean are so important for us today as men and women, as young people, as boys and girls. When they said, sir, we would see Jesus, they were opening a key to life. And, and because that's the most promised field and, and request that has ever been made and could ever be made in their life. No more important question in the world than that question. We would like to see Jesus in our time. Now, it should be our sincerest desire. Uh, we should want to see Jesus. We should want to experience him for ourselves. No, no secondhand report it will be good enough. We, we should long to be in his presence. We should want to assure ourselves that he is real, that he's relevant, that he is resurrected. And like Thomas, we ought to want to put our hands in his hand and we want to touch his side and we want to see the scars in his feet. You know, we should know Jesus as our savior and our friend. And, 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 and that's the reason you and I are here in this place this morning. It's because we want, to, we want to know Jesus. And we want to know more about him and what he's done in his life. We've come not to learn about the latest political philosophy, nor about, um, <laughs> about some uh, dead theology. Uh, we, we come to a place that we love. The, the, the atmosphere is cordial. The prayers are reassuring. But none of it counts if we don't see Jesus in this place. Why? Why? Well, I think that the, I think the Greeks uh, uh, give us a clue. I think the Greeks wanted to see Jesus because something is missing in their lives. I think we need to see Jesus because some things are missing in our lives. You know, once we had high hopes and, and such great dreams and such a fresh sense of Christ's of presence in our midst, uh, and, and, and the years have taken its toll, and uh, there's they're just something that's not there any longer, and our, our lives are tedious sometimes and lacking in vitality, and, and if we are, like we're on a continual treadmill, you know, <laughs> That's a, a kind of an ironic thing itself. You know, we think about a treadmill as being a high-end uh, um, exercise uh, equipment, but, but the treadmill uh, was not there in the beginning. The treadmill was introduced into the prisons of England uh, as a form of punishment. And sometimes I think it's a form of punishment, and you might think it's a form of punishment too. But, but anyway, uh, Prisoners were forced to walk hour upon hour upon hour on these treadmills and, and, uh, until they were just worn down uh, in, in their lives. It was, it, was, it was mindless, it was meaningless, it, it accomplished exactly nothing and, and made people miserable in our time. Many people today uh, feel that way in their life. Uh, a deep sense of meaninglessness because uh, their life feels like a treadmill. They're constantly moving but going absolutely nowhere. And they're, they're always busy but producing nothing. Something is missing in our lives. You know, some of us uh, are tired of life. And in, in, in recent weeks and months, we've seen people who've taken their own lives because they see no hope in their in their life. Uh, uh, so, uh, I, we're not the only culture that's there though. Virtually every culture in the world is there. Virtually every culture has a word or a phrase that explains what it means to, to, to have this sense of, of being on a treadmill, of, of lacking meaning uh, in life in our time. Uh, the Germans have coined a new word. Uh, they do that by putting together a couple of words to, to express the, the feeling that they, they have in, in their life. And in, in this case, uh, they have put together two words 
two words that uh, that express this this something missing uh, in their lives. Uh, they have put together uh, two German words, Leben, L-E-B-E-N, which means life, and Mühl, Mühl, uh, which which means tired, to form a word in, in, that is Leben, Lebensmühl, Lebensmühl. That literally means life tired, or tired of, of, of life. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and that's what we feel in our lives sometimes, that we're just tired of life. We want something else. And where do we find that something else? Well, I think the Greeks had, had a good understanding. They, they, they wanted to find it in Jesus Christ. Now, they heard about him, and they, and they, they felt that in Christ they would find something that they were missing uh, in their life. Uh, so, you know, they are on to something. And uh, words in other cultures, in the, uh, the Farsi language, which is spoken in Iran, that, that there's a word, goshe, goshe. And that word means to, uh, to, to uh, practice holding sadness. It means you hold on to your sadness. You can't get rid of it. You can't shake it uh, in your life. Russians have a word, toska. Toska is a word that refers to a sense of, 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 of great spiritual anguish. But, but no way to name a cause, a specific cause. Uh, we, may, we may not be able to pronounce those words in the original language very easily, but we can instantly relate to that feeling and that meaning uh, in their time. And, 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 and uh, there's something missing in our lives. There's nothing we can do about it. We can't, we can't buy anything. We, there's no earthly substitute that can fill in for that presence of, of God in our life. And, and, and that must be what the, G, the Greeks were feeling when they came and said to Philip, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. But you know, that's not the only thing that I think that, that, that speaks to us in our lives. And I think it, the second thing that strikes me about this when they came and made that request is that they wanted to see Jesus because they wanted to experience the peace that Christ brings. They wanted to see Jesus so they could experience the peace that Christ brings in their lives. You know, uh, we, we need something to give our life not only meaning, but also new vitality. You know, we're empty and we're bored many times. And because we're empty and bored, uh, we have uh, no vitality, no zest, no, no drive in our life. There's an energy crisis in our lives. And that energy crisis has nothing to do with oil or nuclear or wind power or solar energy. It has to do with the lack of God being in, in, in our midst and, 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 and the heart that we have. Uh, we need a new heart when we reach that point. Um, Ezekiel talks about the new heart that God is going to give. He says in the 36th chapter of his, of his book, And I will give you a new heart, and I'll pour, I will put a new spirit in you. I will take your stony, stubborn heart, and give you a tender, responsive heart. You know, we need a, a, a new heart that we can only see in Jesus and find in Jesus in our in our lives. Uh, William Gibson wrote a book uh, um, called Mass, M-A-S-S, -S, Mass for the Dead. Uh, it's kind of a, a morbid sounding book, but it, it is written to honor his parents and their devotion to their children. And in the book, Gibson tells how he grieved his, the loss of his mother and wanted so badly to understand, um, to understand the secret of her faith that gave her strength and gave her life and gave her peace and, and, uh, and courage to face life and her death. And he says, so I took my mother's gold-rimmed glasses and, I fa and, a, and her faded prayer book and sat in her favorite chair. And I opened the book because he, I wanted to hear what she had heard. I put on her glasses because I wanted to see what she had seen. I sat in her place of prayer and devotion because I wanted to feel what she had felt. 
I wanted to experience what so deeply centered and empowered her. Nothing happened, though. It did not work. And you know what? That shouldn't be a surprise. That shouldn't be a surprise because what Gibson needed was a faith of his own. Not the faith of his mother or his father or his brother or his sister or anybody else. He needed a faith of his own. He needed to see Jesus. And that's what he was missing. It wasn't a chair. It wasn't a prayer book. It wasn't the glasses that shaped his mother's character or brought her the peace that she enjoyed. It was her relationship with Jesus. You see, Gibson's mother saw Jesus and that truth shone from her life in such a way that it caused Gibson to want to have that same experience in his life. And that's what all of us need, to see Jesus and to know that he is real and that he is with us in life's trials and turmoil. So, you know, I think that the, the Greek wanted to, to see Jesus because something was missing. I think the, the Greeks wanted to see Jesus because they wanted the peace that only Christ can bring into our lives. But I think there's a final thing that strikes me this morning, and that is this, that we want to see Jesus because we want to know that one day we can live with God. We want to be assured that one day we can live with God. Now, I know we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. But before the creation of the world, God planned for our salvation. God planned for our redemption. And no matter how much of a disaster our lives are, uh, uh, there, is, there is one who offers more grace and more peace and, and, and more love than we could ever exhaust in a million lifetimes. If we'll only ask, sir, we would like to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus so we can obtain new meaning in our lives, new vitality, new possibilities, and a blessed assurance that we will never be separated from God. And friend, we can know that this morning. I hope you know it already, but if you don't, you can know it this morning. Because Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. And no wonder the Greeks wanted to see him. No wonder we want to see him and to know him. Through the eyes of faith, we can find him in our midst. Because this morning, he was here. He's available to us today. To all who receive him, he is here. So we need to take new hope and new courage and, and, and commit ourselves anew to the work that Jesus has planned uh, for us, for us in our lives. Uh, as someone has so beautifully said, Christianity is not a philosophy, which we thought maybe the Greeks were coming and looking for, but Christianity is a, 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 a life that Jesus came to impart. You know, perhaps you're frustrated this morning. Perhaps you feel like you're on the treadmill this morning. Well, if you do, do, just do the same thing the Greeks did. Sir, we would see Jesus. Let us pray. Well, I'm grateful for today. I'm grateful for your presence. And I miss, I'm grateful for the challenge of this lesson. And I just ask, Father, that by your Holy Spirit, you would empower us to be those people that you want us to be. And Lord, if we find ourselves on the treadmill this morning, with life uh, not having much meaning, life not having much peace, and no assurance that we'll never be separated from you. Help us know, Lord, you're waiting to meet us and to give us that in our lives today. I give you praise for all these things now, Lord, and I ask them in Jesus' name and for our sake, O oh Lord. Amen. Well, I hope this uh, lesson has blessed you this morning and has blessed me and the study and preparing for it and the hope that the world has in Jesus Christ. Let's help people seek him in our lives. And when the person comes to ask you, sir, we would see Jesus. Be ready to tell him how to do that. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and have a wonderful week. Amen.